Good day, folks. Professor Fiore here. In this video, we are going to take a look at superposition, but kind of a special case. So we've already seen a couple of videos on superposition, right? The whole idea is if we have a multi-source circuit, we can treat each source independently. In other words, we come up with a number of equivalent circuits. For every source, there's an equivalent circuit. And to create that equivalent, we replace all of the other sources with their ideal internal resistance. So we short voltage sources and we open current sources. If you haven't seen those other videos, make sure you look at those first before you continue with this one. One of the really important caveats, one of the important characteristics, is that the circuit must be a linear bilateral network. Now, if you have normal voltage and current sources, resistors, inductors and capacitors, as we'll see later in AC, by definition, that's what you have. You have a linear bilateral network. So a linear device is one where we have a straight line plot between current and voltage. If it's bilateral, that means it doesn't matter what the polarity is, right? You can't put a resistor in backwards. But we have many, many components where they are not linear, they're not bilateral. So I want to show you what happens, why superposition does not work if you don't obey that, if you don't notice that. Now there are certain, I have to be a little careful here, there are certain situations in which you can have a linear, um, Let's, let's call it a linear bilateral effect. In other words, the circuit of, uh, sort of approximates that, even though one of the elements in it is not necessarily linear or bilateral, right? To do this, you would actually have to have some a priori knowledge. In other words, some foregoing knowledge of the circuit of what it's actually doing. Um, and then you can apply those rules. And I'll show you this at the, at the end of this video, how this works. Um, you know, for those of you who have maybe are just brushing up on some things you've gone through before, you might be thinking, hey, you know, when we do uh, discrete transistor amplifiers, you know, we sometimes use superposition to analyze them. And it's not necessarily true that everything in there is, you know, like a resistor. All right. How does that work? Well, yeah, that's that's a case where you you actually know, for example, how the transistor is being biased and you can apply superposition to it. You know what the limits are, right? This will become a little bit more clear towards the end of the video. So what I've done is I've thrown in a diode, right? D1. So you may have seen diodes in your introductory electronics course, but if you haven't, I'll give you the lowdown real, real quick. So a diode is a semiconductor device that allows conventional current to flow easily if it's in the direction of the arrow. In other words, here, left to right and disallows current to flow easily in the other direction, in other words, right to left. So you can kind of think of it like a valve, like a check valve, you know, it goes one way, right? Allows current to go, in this particular circuit, allow current to go this way very easily. Um, as it's conducting, if it's in that direction, if the current's going left to right, the diode will have a voltage across it somewhere in the neighborhood of 0.6 to 0.7 volts. So it's not zero. It's not like a mechanical switch that would be zero. So there is a, a modest voltage there, not too big. And then if it's going in the other direction, then it basically appears as an open. So you get, you know, potentially a very large voltage across it, all depending on what the, uh, you know, circuit component values are, power supply values and so forth. So what I want to do is just kind of walk through this using superposition naively. In other words, not remembering. I'm going to pretend that I, you know, I forgot about this, the whole linear bilateral network thing, and we'll see what ends up happening. So just to follow, we create two equivalent circuits, right? One for voltage source number one, where we're going to replace V2 with its internal resistance, which would be a short, right? So we're going to short this out. And then we're going to do the same thing for V2, where we're going to short out V1, right? And we would wind up with this, All right? So here's our first equivalent with 50 volt source, and that second 20 volt source has been shorted and here's the second circuit the 20 volt source is here and the 50 volt source has been shorted and now you would go in and you would just analyze these right in the in the ordinary fashion right using series parallel worlds uh, rules so over here 
what we would notice is I have a 6K and a 3K in parallel. All right. So that's basically going to be 2K. And we have a, a, a 50 volt power supply that wants to produce current like so in this direction, this clockwise direction, which would forward bias, would turn on the diode. And this would just have a 7 tenths of a volt drop across it. All right. Which, you know, given a 50 volt, 50 volt supply, eh, we could just about ignore that. You know, it's a little over a percentage point. It's not much. So really, we get the 50 volts dividing between this 1K and this parallel combination, which is 2K. So we're going to get about two thirds of 50 volts, just a little bit less, because like I said, we're going to lose around six or seven tenths across that diode. All right. So, you know, it's going to be 32 and change, right? That's what VA is going to work out to. Now, when I come over to the second equivalent circuit, right? V4 over here, the 20 volt supply, wants to produce current in the counterclockwise direction. So we have a 3K and then a 1K, 6K parallel combo. All right. That's what it is. That's what you would probably assume quickly. But don't forget the diode. What do we have with the diode? Well, if the current's trying to go this way, that would turn off the diode. So the diode opens up. Well, if I have an open in series with a 1K, that's an open. In other words, I really don't have a 1K in parallel with a 6K. What I have is an open in series with a 1K, which is in parallel with 6K. In other words, it's a 6K in parallel with open, which is 6K. So we have another divider here, a 3K and a 6K. In other words, I should get about two thirds of this potential for um, VA and the equivalent circuit number two. Right? So what's two thirds of our 20 volts? Well, that's going to be about, you know, 13 and a third right? Something like that. So we would take those two potentials, add them together, and that would be our equivalent value, right? In other words, our original VA. So let's see what happens. All right. So moving over here. Um, like I said, we, we estimated a little less than 33. So I'm getting 32.8585. That looks good, right? If you want to do this with some more accuracy, you would say, well, I'm going to lose 7 tenths on this. So there's really 49.3 left, 49.3, 49.4, all depending on what the actual diode potential is. And then I could do the divider between the 1K and the 3K, 6K. All right. So get a little bit more accuracy there. If you ignore the diode drop, like I said, it'd be 33 and a third. But that looks good. All right. Then we come back over here and we did compute 13 and a third. So that looks great, too. Right. Happy, happy. So I would add those two together. Right. So that's going to give you like 46 point one something. All right. Whatever. Let's go look at the original circuit. Oh, we got 37.3. Well, that's a pretty big <laughs> variation. You know, we're not off by like hundreds of a volt. Right. You know, millivolts. That's big enough to say that we're just flat out wrong. 37.3, you know, versus like I said, 46 and change. That's just way too big. So how is this the case, right? I mean, you know, we've just shown that you, you really can't do it, but why? You know, what's the real reason? Well, in this case, it's actually pretty easy to figure out. And that is in this equivalent circuit, right? So if you went in lab and you just built this circuit, right? you would forward bias this diode, you'd get the 0.7 volts. And if you just built this circuit, you would reverse bias the diode and you'd get an open, just like we said. And we, you know, we get the potentials that we see. But in the original circuit, this diode is one or the other. It can't simultaneously be both forward conducting and, you know, reverse blocking. It's either forward and giving us 0.7 or it's not, it's open. So clearly the idea of splitting this apart isn't going to work. Now, you know, if we had turned this power supply around, it may very well be the case that in both instances, you would have a forward bias diode. Maybe we get, you know, better accuracy that way. But as a general rule, right, you can't say that. You don't necessarily know. So the diode has to be in one of two positions, right? So you could figure this out by, um, doing a little approximation. And this is what I was referring to earlier. 
if you have some a priori knowledge, right, some knowledge beforehand, um, you can still use superposition. So like I said, given the sizes of these power supplies and the sizes of the resistors and having some experience doing this, I would bet that this diode is forward biased. In which case, what I'm going to say is, okay, if this is forward biased, I'm going to lose 7 tenths thereabouts across it, leaving me with 49.3 volts for this source. So, you know, these are in series, so I could just sort of swap their positions and say this is essentially the same as having a 49.3 volt source and a 1K resistor, and that's what's connected to VA. All right? So it's kind of subsumed, if you will, the diode potential, that drop into the power supply. And now, because of this sort of pre-existing knowledge, I could now apply superposition to this, right? Because I would just have the three resistors and the two sources, right? I'd sort of, like I said, absorb this diode into the source. But that would require me to know, right? That would require me to know beforehand that this thing really is forward biased. Because like I said, it's got to be forward biased in this circuit. It can only be one or the other. It can't be forward and reversed at the same time. So mm, we can do that, all right? I know if I know it's going to be forward biased, then I can just treat it that way, simplify the circuit and go about my merry business. All right. But if you don't know, well, you're stuck. So, you know, referring back to that earlier comment about you know, like an amplifier, hey, we use superposition. How is that the case? Well, we know that, in the, for example, we could use an AC-DC superposition. We would know that the circuit is set up correctly for the DC bias. And then I can superimpose on top of it the AC signal, and everything would work out okay, right? You know, but if the bias was messed up, if we made a mistake, then, you know, the AC analysis, which makes that initial assumption, it, that goes out the window, all right? Okay, so, you know, the one thing I want you to remember more than anything is this. As a general rule, the circuit has to be a linear bilateral network. If it's voltage sources, current sources, resistors, and as we'll see later in AC, we can also include capacitors and inductors, then the network will be a linear, a linear bilateral network and you can go off and use superposition, all right? If not, you know, you got something like a diode, that's not necessarily the case. You might be able to, like I said, make some approximations, but as a general rule, you know, if you're not sure, well, don't, it's that simple. And it's also worth remembering that the functions that you're looking at have to be linear functions. So we can use Ohm's law to find voltages and currents, but you can't use superposition to find power because power is a square law function, right? Power is voltage squared divided by resistance or current squared divided by resistance. So, um, excuse me, times resistance. So you can't um, use superposition to find power, right? You can't go in this circuit and um, you know let's just assume the diode wasn't there you can't figure out the power in, in this resistor the 6k here the power in this resistor the, the six the same 6k add them together and get the same power that you have in the original circuit because power is not a linear function all right it's a square law function okay important thing to remember a lot of people forget that all right any questions put them down in the comments and we'll see you next time